be. There needs to be a seat belt. You will follow along. Ow. Get over I there. I got a headache. I got a headache too. Well, that's a little rain. The sky's all dark. I could have keep this up beach. All right. Hi everyone. I'm here with a Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. Happy anniversary in heaven to my granny and papa today. They got married on St. Patrick's Day many years ago. Hope you guys are wearing your green. I got green eyes and I got a green pen. I had on green pants earlier. You bumped the camera, is it still okay? No. All right. So today we're going to be reading Luke chapter two, verse 36 through 52, Psalm 60, and Proverbs chapter 11, verse 15. Huh? No. I didn't. So this looks like it's going to be a short reading. So in um, Luke today, we'll be talking about the boy Jesus at the temple. Okay. So that's what we're getting into. Taking off from yesterday and then getting into the boy Jesus at the temple. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. Hey, Sherman, can you shut these for me? Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were still returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Mary and Joseph didn't know that Jesus was not following them. There was probably like, you know, crowds of people. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a whole day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. Where do you think he was? Do you think he was there somewhere scared, crying, looking for his parents? After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? Jesus asked. He asked him, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Amen. Amen. And that is what we're stopping with Luke today. 
Okay, and now we're going to Psalm 60. It has 12 verses. Psalm 60, for the director of music to the tune of the Lily of the Covenant, a victim of David for teaching when he fought Aram Naharam and Aram Zobal, and when Joab returned and struck down 12,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. All right. That was a lot, wasn't it? You have rejected us, God, and burst upon us. You have been angry. Now restore us. You have shaken the land and tore it open. Mend its fractures, for it is quaking. You have shown your people desperate times. You have given us wine that makes us stagger. But for those who fear you, you have raised a banner to be unfurled against the bow. Save us and help us with your right hand, that those you love may be delivered. God has spoken from the sanctuary. In triumph, I will partial out Shechem and measure off the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet. Judah is my scepter. Moab is my wash basin. On Edom I toss my sandal. Over Philistia I shout in triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, God? You who have now rejected us? and you no longer go out with our armies. Give us aid against the enemy, for human help is worthless. With God, we will gain the victory, and, we'll, and he will stample, and he will trample down our enemies. Amen. And that was Psalm 60. Psalm 60. The whole song. Okay. And now, we are going to end today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 11, verse 15. One proverb. Like I say, it seems like the further you get in the Bible, um, like the shorter Proverbs we get. Usually it starts out with a lot and then slows down. Sometimes you'll get a lot, and then, but mostly it's like one or two, sometimes three. Whoever puts up security for a stranger will surely suffer, but whoever refuses to shake hands and pledge is saved. Yep. Gotta be careful. Be careful who you trust, I guess. You know, maybe dealing with, uh, you know, Satan's the prince of this world, and he has a lot of his demons and people that follow him here on this earth. So you got to be on your guard. And Satan is the father of lies. So be on your guard and pray. And keep your faith strong. And make sure you're dealing with good people. If you feel uneasy about the situation, trust your instincts. Because that's probably God telling you the sake of the good situation you want. You know, you don't need to be here. Trust your instincts. Because they're usually right. That's probably God probably your brother Jesus or your father God or an angel telling you hurry get out of here you know this is not good for you do you feel good about a situation or do you feel bad you know what I mean all right guys let me go through the prayer request please play play oh I cannot talk 
stupid coat that. So embarrassing. And it got no better. Well, please keep my mom, Rhonda Karchner, in your prayers. She just got back a little bit ago. A little bit ago. Oh, from her radiation appointment. And she's got um, July 23rd for her last one. Um, the blood pressure medicine. And the other ones she's on um, seem to be helping for now. Please pray for Sherm. Please, he's got a headache today. Please pray for Cindy and Jim Welch, Dora Parker, Dean Betty. He's got, um, that's our cousin, he has leukemia. And um, I heard he's not doing very well right now. Please pray for the Burt family, Dole's family, Elizabeth Jeffries, Judy Thompson. Layla and her son Emil, um, Danette Rager, Abby Myers and Jimmy Myers, Levi Dempsey. I uh, have not. We have not heard anything new. There's no change as far as far as we know. No change with Levi. He does have brain activity, but he has not woke up yet. I guess his dad was talking loudly to him, and you know talking really loud to him, trying to wake him, to him to wake up, and his eyes were fluttering, like he was trying to open his eyes, but he, he couldn't get them open, you know? So he's trying. He's trying to come back. And please pray for um, Joyce White. Please pray for Abby, because uh, she left with her boyfriend last night, and she hasn't called anyone or came back home yet so we don't know if she's all right or what she's doing nobody knows what's going on so we don't even know if she's safe she has not called anyone she has not came back so please keep her in your prayers I really appreciate that Please pray for Mom and Jimmy because they're all having a rough time around all this. All of them together. Are just, they're all going through it right now. You know? Okay, guys. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.